Okay guys, welcome back. We're doing some Substance Painter today. So let's launch up that file that we were working with in the previous video. Uh, my apologies by the way if this video doesn't, well it isn't, coming out on Friday. Um, I do aim to upload these videos every Friday but unfortunately I couldn't upload this one in time. But nevertheless it's up anyway so it's all good. Alright then, so Today I will be showing you some of the basics, as I've already said. Um, all I'll be showing you really is a quick method of painting your models um, in Substance Painter. So right out of the box, you might feel like you may want to just like paint all over it and think, oh, okay, this is going to be so much fun. Wow, let's, let's get this brush out and maybe change the color by scrolling here and let's change it to red. Wow, that looks amazing, right? Well, um, it's not really advised to um, be painting your, or, or doing anything really using the brush. It's more common for people to make what, what are called fill layers. So by clicking this button here, we'll create a fill layer. And the way that I know that is, it's always the second button on the right hand side. So if you just hover, you can also see it say there, add a fill layer. So you click that, sweet. And then you can choose a base color. And why don't you look at that? It's all red, which is great. We didn't have to paint all over it. All we had to do is create that fill there and boom, it's completely red. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now again, guys, um, you, the reason why I said having an ID is so useful is because we could have targeted just the base. Um, but in this case, it's targeting everything. However, um, a neat trick, well, something that you can do is if you press F1 so that we can see the UV, DVs. In fact, I should, have sh I should have told you already. If you press F2, it'll maximize this. And then if you press F1, you'll have both this, both the viewport and the UVs. And then if you press F3, you'll get just the UV layout. So yeah, again, another quick tip. Right. So yeah, this, this um, tip or trick that I'm about to show you. So if you right click this, and say right we want to add a black mask so that's going to create um, a black mask as you can see by if you hold alt and then left click and there's the black mask and if you see here you see what I'm doing right now I'm creating um, what's called an alpha so all the black information carries zero value so it's not going to hold anything but the white information will hold a consistent one so that's that's the best way to remember it um, in my opinion. So white is it's visible, black is invisible. So if we click this on if we click on this, you can see that the fill there is only showing where the alpha is. So this is very, very powerful. This can be used in many different projects, so I highly advise um getting used to working in masks and fill layers and things like that. Right, so the neat trick that I was gonna show you. So Again, if we create a black mask, so there's our black mask. Now I want the red to be just on the base. How are we gonna do that? I mean, yes, we could easily, if we click it, we could easily paint along the surface, but that's gonna be quite taxing on our part. So it's gonna take quite a bit of effort. So a more efficient way of doing this without having an ID is by, if you see this icon here, if we just hover, polygon fill. So by clicking that, we can then select um, individual polygons, which is great. So here we're selecting, um, you can see that I'm selecting um, the polygons just here. Um, but again, this, this can be quite time consuming, right? Um, and it's also selecting the faces at the bottom, right? Which can be such a pain in the bum if you're not wanting to select these polygons. So how can we get around this? Well, if we select this, which is the UV, and then go to the UV, and if I just click and drag along the one shell, you can now see that the whole, right, if we just click on this guy, the whole shell now is completely red without anything else being red, which is awesome. So if we do the same with this, with the, um, with the, with the base at the bottom, if I select the mask, and then select this shell and then select red. We can now see that the whole base has been selected and is red, 
so that's great um now you remember oh, remember in the first video i think it was yeah in the first video why i said seams are so important well this is where it becomes quite important you see how the red's bleeding off the main base and going across the leg just here well this isn't what we're wanting right we want just a red base to be selected so um how can we get around this um the easiest way that i can find of getting around this is is if we select the mask and if we get off this we don't want to be selecting uv we what we want is the brush so we'll go back to the brush and select the alpha now if i color in across here you can see that it's um, so we're not really having much control, right? It's a bit annoying. So if, if I control Z that, and then um, is it press X to invert? Brilliant. Yep. So X is to invert. Um, so you can you can um, toggle through white and black just like that. Um, and how do we rescale? I think it is right click. No. Nope. Well, the easiest way is through here. So we can just lower that down. There is a shortcut, but I completely forgot what that shortcut is. <laughs> um, right, so yeah, we could we could do this, but again, very taxing. So if we go to um, the UV layout and just try and identify where this area is, which is just here, and we can have a bit of an easier time now doing deselecting it there. But if you look closely, we can see that there's a bit of transparency going on here, which may or may not um, be the look that we're wanting. So again, if we select this guy, and if we select the polygons now, and zoom in ish to about there, and now we can just deselect. Oh, Control Z and hold X or tap X, and now just click and drag across these polygons. And as you can see in the viewport, we are deselecting those now. The it looks like it's kind of it's leaving a rough edge, right? Well, I I am um, I think the main reason why it looks like that is because we're we're in 2K. If I select the red and then if I switch to 4K, let's see if that improves. Um, not really. I mean. It is. It is very rough, right? I mean, if if um if you're working on the project and you had this kind of look and you just wanted to smooth it out, I mean, you can easily just get the brush out and what if we select the alpha? Make sure you've selected the alpha by clicking this square, and then select the brush. Um, you may want to change the size to make it a little bit smaller, and then you can just soften it by um, pressing X to toggle, and just simply draw it across like so. As you can see, it's starting to soften. Now, I'm not going to do the whole thing, obviously, but this is just for an example. So, yeah, if if you are having issues, then uh, with like with your UV, where you put your seams, and that's how you would work your way around that issue. Awesome. Now then, if I just if I just delete this now, if I delete the um, this fill there, I can just press delete actually. And let's do something more interesting. So if I go and scroll to, hmm, let's go to, what am I going to, let's go to smart materials. And what I'm looking for is a wood material. So what I've got open at the moment on my other monitor is I was looking at um, references of different stools. Now you can see the majority of them are made out of wood, right? So I found this guy which looks interesting. So we can just hold left click and drag. Now um, load it up in the viewport shortly. It's taking, a, it's taking some time because we're working in 4K. So what I will do is lower that resolution just like so. Okay, cool. Now this looks very interesting, right? Um, hold left click and drag in to zoom out, just like in Maya. Uh, yeah, this looks so so cool, um, and we can see we can have a better um, look on how this will react in different kinds of environments by pressing F10, and shortly, yeah, there we are, sweet. So as you can see, 
yeah, basically substance matter comes with a bunch of um what do you call them um hdri images and so yeah we can get to see what our mother will look like in different um environments so this is what it looks like here which is pretty cool we can change the the environment map by you see where it says panorama click that and we have a selection of different environments just here so there's a cave entrance here whoa doesn't this look epic this looks pretty cool um what else do we have here we have this one very interesting this looks awesome so yeah guys um i always see what my um my models will look like um in this what do you even call this um let me see let me hover over this in this rendering um option before i export my textures just to see how it behaves and this is already looking pretty sick pretty cool but the thing is though it's kind of bad practice to just grab a smart material and just slap it onto your um your model because if you're hmm, how could i put it if people that use substance painter they'll recognize these textures and if you just dump it on they'll be like oh wow you didn't even you didn't really alter or modify it at all they'll be able to tell because you know they, they're in substance pair a lot of the time they they'll recognize the textures and so what what is advised to do is at least change a few of the settings so let's let's make the dirt so we can give it a different color so as you can see now it looks like there's a bit of paint on it or something right it looks a little bit different um let's change the color to something hmm something like this something like that there we go um we can do other things such as uh, scale the uv size so that'll just scale how big or small it is um wood veins let's check this out um so we can change the height so we can have it dig in by having the uniform color um negative and then vice versa we can have it like stick out by giving it a plus a positive value so that's interesting we can change the color just here to anything we desire can't really see though unless we zoom in but i can see the lines just there um what else do we have in fact i don't want it that that bright um the wood fibers so we can change the fibers here let's have a look what does it look like if we change it to something like this if it's green yeah we can kind of see it can you see that i can see those lines yeah um let's change it to something like that cool and of course we have the wood we have the base just here so the base color of how we want the um store to be this looks really interesting actually but it's a it's kind of too saturated for my liking so i'm just going to desaturate it cool very interesting in fact let me make it a bit more purplish and desaturate it okay eh, in fact i'm not feeling that color anymore let's make it blue awesome um right so let's preview this guy now by hitting F10. Okay, very interesting. This looks very cool. Um, one more thing, one last thing that I really want to show you guys as well. If we zoom in, right, if I press F10. Now remember how I said, again, I'm going to mention this a second time now. I said to you guys in the first episode um, to be careful on where you're placing your seams. Well, if we look carefully, you see how you can see wait let me zoom in you can see this little line here it's not really a little line you see the line here you see how the groove of the material isn't matching with the groove here well that's because the seams there and so that's why i chose to put my seam there because it's a little bit more out of the way than up here so we could have put the seam here but you can see however on this edge right it's smoothly going across the surface which is exactly what I was aiming for so that looks a lot more cleaner and same for the legs so on the front of the legs um, everything's seamless however if we go on the inside 
we can clearly see this line of where the seam is and where it's not really matching up so yeah that it's looking great um that's ex that's exactly why i decided to put the seams there guys they're a lot more out of the way and if i didn't mention to you that the seams were in those areas um i highly doubt that you guys would even be aware of where those seams were so yeah um so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna file and save this and in my next video i will be showing you how to export these textures so again thank you for watching um i'll upload my next video next week so take care guys peace